Always been an exciting time now as uh, things start to look up in the Indian car space and there has been so much talk about activity from certain players. One particular player in question here is of course Nissan along with its uh, sub-brand Datsun. There has been a fair amount that we've already seen happen and the good part is there's a promise for a lot of it to come as well. Uh, the gentleman who heads the uh, business for Nissan in uh, Africa, Middle East and India is Christian Madras and he speaks to us right now. Thanks for uh, joining us. Thank you. It's good to have you here and welcome to Delhi as well. Thank you very much. I appreciate you know, the World Economic Forum, which is a good opportunity to better understand India and also to network with key, uh, yeah. key persons in well, the I country. I can relate to the second part because we get time <laughs> with you, so I'm, I'm pleased. Um, to start with, of course, uh, give us a sense of uh, the, the overall scope of business that you look at because very often when it comes to um, the automobile space um, you know China starts to sort of eclipse everything else uh, but when it comes to Asia uh, the Middle East and Africa as well as of course India are being seen as the, the sort of growth drivers for the future especially Africa and India yeah absolutely I'm in charge of, uh, of three different regions uh, uh, Middle East Africa and India obviously I mean the um, the, uh, the economic situation and the markets are, bi are, are different, but we can see a number of commonalities, especially between India and, and, and Africa. Uh, and uh, maybe you have seen that more and more, I mean, we uh, developed and uh, produce cars in India, of course, for domestic market first, but that are exportable more and more, you know, in Africa and some in some other countries in the Middle East. So there are some connections between the three, the three as areas I'm responsible of, yeah. Well, one of the, the sort of premises on which the Datsun business was brought back was exactly this, where um, unlike Indonesia and Russia, South Africa was going to be serviced through India as well. So seeing that sort of relationship and seeing the export numbers going up out of Chennai, um, how encouraging is it for you from a business case uh, perspective? Well, first of all, I mean, we consider that our choice to, um, to make our uh, plant in Chennai an export base mm. uh, uh, was a very good strategy. You know, today more than 100,000 cars are exported every day, every year uh, out of uh, out of Chennai. I think this year we will hit the record. Uh, we'll produce more than 370,000 cars in Chennai, but more than 100,000 will be exported. And uh, if we look at the future, this is this is a win-win strategy. Uh, our strategy, uh, you know, it's we want to achieve 5% uh, market share in India. Uh, in 2020 for Nissan and Datsun together um, and um, of course we will launch a number of models in order to support this strategy. Those models that will be developed and produced in India uh, will be obviously focusing on the Indian market but also will be exportable cars for Africa and for some of the Middle East markets. This so is a strategy we have in mind. So you've talked about eight cars coming in the next few years. Ah, uh, yes, you have uh, seen that, yeah. <laughs> yeah so so we, we, are, we are planning eight new cars mm -hmm. uh, in the next five years in order to support you know, our, ma our market objective of 5% market share. Of course, eight models, both for Nissan and Datsun together. And um, what sort of potential do you see to you know, increase and enhance the kind of um, you know, platform as well as path sharing? I, I know that as a strategy, we've already heard from, from you before that um, there will be no cross badging with Renault, but uh, these platforms, would they be specific to just Nissan and Datsun or could there be some sharing with Renault well, well under the skin? No, I mean, the, the, the common module strategy and the common platform strategy is, a, is, a, is an alliance strategy. So this will be open to Nissan, Datsun and obviously Renault. Uh, and I think the best example of this strategy is what we have been doing recently between Redigo, the new Datsun cars that has been launched a couple of months ago, and Quid. Uh, those two cars are based on the same platform. They share more than 50% of components, but at the end of the car, you have two different cars. Mm -hmm. It's not cross-badging. It's total different concept of cars, uh, you but uh, relying on same platforms, which uh, in terms of uh, development, in terms of investment, and also in terms of cost, you know, it's a huge advantage. When it comes to CMFA, uh, how much of that do you see I mean, how much of that potential is still unrealized in the sense that, of course, we've seen these two cars, they've both been successes, and um, you know, the, that, that's seeming like the tip of the iceberg to us because there's still a lot that can happen there. It's just a start. <laughs> you know, what, what has been done with CMFA in the last two or three years is just you know, the first example of what is possible with this new platform. I would like just to remind you that this new platform was decided in 2011. So it took uh, us less three years to develop it. Uh, develop also common engines. 
uh, and, and obviously, I mean, this platform will be used more and more, you know, in the coming years for uh, Datsun uh, and for uh, and, and for Renault as well. Yeah. So this is uh, just a starting point. Now in India, of course, the other platform that's had a lot of success is M0, um, and even there, there seems to be some more potential. There seems to be a lot more that could still happen because. You know, there are various segments that you're still not operating in. There's still various body styles that you don't perhaps uh, offer in the Indian market. Um, would these, is it fair to say that it's these two platforms that will sort of drive the growth for these eight new models, or could we be looking at new uh, platforms as well coming in? No, we, we may have uh, other platforms because when you are looking, uh, when you are talking about Nissan, uh, we would like also to localize in India more and more global uh, models of Nissan, which are very successful outside India, like X Trail. You know, X Trail, you know, is maybe one of the iconic model we have in, in a Nissan lineup, we want to import, obviously, uh, X-Trail in India. It's an example. But certainly, uh, you're right, CMFA uh, will be a strong base in terms of platform. M0, or uh, uh, evolution of M0, uh, could be another platform where we can work together with Renault colleagues in, in India. And you will see, maybe in the future, some uh, models for India uh, developed on the M0 platform. Now, this point that you made is an interesting one, because very often, your critics or critics of any brand always go after this one point, saying it's one thing to produce a lot of cars for the local market with obviously local requirements in mind, mm -hmm. but there's also value in bringing in some of your globally successful nameplates, you know, the, the, the cars that uh, the brand is known by, the, you know, the one that it's associated with, and not just the flagships like a GTR, but, you know, other cars like um, now, of course, the new Micra. Um, how do you balance those two things? Um, you know, when we look at Nissan, N Nissan is a global brand. So clearly our objective in the next few years is to, um, I would say not to develop specific cars for India, uh, to adapt obviously, but uh, uh, to uh, localize uh, some of the global uh, successful models we have in the Nissan lineup outside, uh, outside India, in Europe, in Middle East, in, in US. Um, because, you know, we, we, we don't have to redevelop new cars. And we want to position Nissan at a different level. Uh, when we are talking with Datsun, Datsun is a specific case where we consider that India could be a strong base for the Datsun brand. For India, obviously, but also, as I said, for, uh, for Africa. Uh, you know, when we look at uh, Go and Go Plus now, they are exported in South Africa. They are exported in the right hand, uh, right hand drive countries. Will be now exported in left hand drive. So more and more, you know, uh, Datsun can be developed for India market first, taking into account the Indian uh, characteristics and requirements of the market, but will be exported in many of our countries in the region. Yeah. Um, and, and the nameplates like X-Trail, for example, is, is that always going to be something that remains an import-only strategy, or would you look to start localizing cars like that? We too? start to import, but uh, you know that in India, if you want to be competitive, uh, hmm. you know, it's uh, just a first step. Uh, you have to localize, so certainly I mean, the second step will be localization. What about all the, um, you know, th there's, there's so much other talk about uh, how India or, or markets like India offer so much potential in various parts of the market. I mean, now, since there is finally confirmation of, let's say, Lexus coming into India, would you start to look at things like Infinity as well, or is that too far away? Well, so far, it's not in our, in our plans. Uh, we never know what could be the future. But as you know, I mean, we, we, we are focusing on certain markets today for Infinity. Um, we, of course, Infinity is uh, strong in the US, uh, is growing up in China, growing up in Europe, uh, in, in Middle East as well, we have, uh, we have Infinity. Uh, we, we should never say that, n never, but it's not yet in our plans to, to introduce Infinity in, uh, in, in India, at least in the short term. Well, I mean, I have to tell you, the new QX range looks really, really sexy. Uh, okay, so good. Thank you. At <laughs> some point, it may be interesting. But going back to also then, uh, you know, the point about Nissan's own big, big brand cars, I mean, if you ask me, then of course I would love to see a Kashkai or a, or a Juke come to India. But how do you then look at a segment like that, you know, which is obviously going to be high volumes, which is going to be extremely competitive, yes. and where there are already a multiple number of products that are coming in from your comp competitors. So is, is it going to be important to say that, okay, we can have something that's really, really cost competitive and local, and then also have something which is a little bit more premium and global? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you will see that maybe we, we cannot say that we will import Qashqai or Juke, but uh, this is certainly the type of model we want to introduce in India in the short term. Uh, and as I said, you know, they will be localized with some adaptation to the local market. All right, so yeah. it won't be exactly, you know, Juke or Qashqai, 
but you know, s some some type of similar cars. Yeah, I mean, that's this is something we we'll start with on the Nissan brand. No, and that's probably true in most markets that they sell in, right? I mean, they would always have something that's specific to the local market or the local regulation requirement as well. Regulation, obviously, but you know what we have learned also in the in the last few years is that you know in India there are some specific features, specific requirements which are unique to India, and uh, uh, and, we, and we have to be there and we have to be to be to be uh, adapted to those requirements. So you you will see, I mean, the first uh, the first Nissan cars that will come in the near in the, in the near future, and you you will better understand our strategy. How encouraged are you by all this talk about the new regulations that are coming to India now? I mean, there's both the safety regulations as well as the emissions regime. Um, after much, much uh, delay, they're finally starting to kick in. Um, of course, I know your new products will take all that into account, but do you think that gives you an advantage in a sense uh, over some of the better entrenched local players? Because here you are at a position where, you know, you are still to bring in all those new models. So it allows you to seed that investment from today. First of all, I mean, we have all the technology available in our group. So there is no problem in terms of uh, capabilities and technology, both in terms of safety or in terms of uh, e emission. Uh, then after the question is, uh, how do we do it uh, at the best cost? Uh, obviously, if we can anticipate it uh, before, you know, we have launched a car, it's much better. So as we are in the process of developing new cars, certainly, I mean, in the new cars we are developing for India, uh, we will introduce those items as they want. It will be much more cost efficient. This whole talk about doing a lot of cars that are going to be sort of, you know, driven by local requirement and therefore possibly specific to India and its conditions and its, and its uh, very very demanding buyer. Um, when you talk about a car like the new Micra that was just shown at Paris, yes, um, are, are you saying that there is still potential for a product like that, or will we just have a V platform uh, hatchback and not necessarily the new Micra? Today, we don't plan to uh, introduce a new Micra as it is uh, uh, in India, uh, but we have some plans uh, based on uh, uh, maybe you know some common components because the dimension of the car. Uh, we consider that the dimensions of the car are, are fit with the uh, Indian requirements. So not the car as it is, mm. but certainly maybe some derivative of the car available in India in the future. Yeah. This is something we are, talking, we are thinking about. It does look very promising, I have to say. I mean, considering the big leap it's taken now uh, for the Ni Micra name. Uh, but I think where, you know, the, the point that I'd like to understand from you on this is, it's not specific to a Micra, but yeah. uh, let me put it to you another way then. When you talk about uh, the decisions that are being taken for Nissan with its entire global strategy for all the different regions, um, and of course, you know, there are certain considerations, hopefully, that will kick in by the end of this year, which will affect that strategy. Um, when it comes to all of that, yeah. how much of a role does India specifically play towards deciding those decisions? Um, you know, we, we have a process within Nissan, and I think it's the same process within Renault, uh, it's a uh, product plan. We, every year, I mean, we have product plan review. Um, we, we want, uh, from now on, to uh, be able to uh, focus on core models. Uh, so we have identified 25 core models for the group on a worldwide basis. Why focusing on a more limited number of core models? Uh, because first, I mean, we cannot dilute our capacities and capabilities of development. And second, because uh, we cannot just bet on new launches, but also we have for each new car, for each model, to provide regular, you know, newness, regular changes. Mm. Uh, so that's why we want to focus on those 25 core models. Uh, India uh, will be uh, one of the key countries for these uh, new uh, core models. And as I said, the only way to make it happen is to be sure that those core models, of course, will fit with India, but uh, will also fit for export. Uh, because, you know, if we have more volumes, obviously this will make it easier. So my strategy for the region is uh, to develop and produce cars in India for India first, but then after uh, to be sure that those cars will be exportable in my countries. So it's not a contradiction then. What you're saying is that within that 25, even these new products that you talked about for India, and of course with an export potential, fit into that larger absolutely larger strategy. Absolutely. That's why on the Nissan on the Nissan range we want to not only develop brand new cars for India, but we want to import the import 
we want to take the global models which are successful outside and localize them in India uh, and adapt them. Uh, on, the, on the Datsun front, you know, it will be a little bit different. We will develop brand new cars that will be exported from India in the rest of the region. But specific to Nissan and Datsun, uh, could that just change or be tweaked a little bit, you think, based on certain global decisions that are pending? For example? In the sense that if Nissan's strategy starts to alter in, you know, um, in, in terms of how these cars are being produced or whether there is any you know, expansion to the alliance, is that something that could also then bring India a little bit more key or more central to this larger strategy? Ah, but, you know, um, uh, I India will be certainly in the coming years the main uh, source base for passenger cars uh, in, in, in my region. Uh, I want, to, I, I want, I really want to develop, you know, our capabilities in India, not only in terms of production, but also in terms of development, uh, in order to, to to make India, you know, our main source for passenger cars. All right. So one last thing, then I think, uh, which sort of brings all of this together. Uh, you've, of course, always talked about the kind of market share you would like to go after, and you've, you've said that today as well. But um, market share is one thing, which is of course related strictly to volume and also the promise that the market will continue to grow the way Absolutely, it's supposed to. Yes. Uh, but Nissan as a brand, and then again Datsun as a brand in India, it's not as if they're not well-known brands today, they are, they're pretty well-known. What's the kind of position you'd like for them to occupy, and do they necessarily need to go hand-in-hand -hand going forward, or do you see a bigger separation between them? I mean, each brand should have its own territory. Huh? So we want to clearly separate you know, Nissan and, and, and Datsun. As I said, you know, D Nissan, we want to in fact, you know, we want Nissan in India to be what Nissan is outside India. So certainly, I mean, a little bit uh, higher uh, segments as it is today. Uh, that soon uh, is different. That soon, you know, there are some specific uh, requirements. There are uh, um, uh, risers. We have new customers, uh, first-time buyers, uh, and this that, that soon is focusing on on, on, on this uh, these customers. Um, so clear separation uh, between the brand in terms of style. Uh, clear separation in terms of uh, in terms of pricing, obviously. Of course, Datsun also will benefit from the technology of the group. We should never forget that Datsun is part of Nissan. So even you know Datsun will have its own personality. Uh, Datsun is part of the Nissan group. Datsun is a Japanese brand, and, and Datsun will also benefit from the best of our technology. And I think we still have some uh, work in order to improve our communication on this side. Well, it's something that we'll certainly look forward to and uh, watch it all unfold. Mr. Marus, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you very much. All the very best. Thank you.